even think we understand the level of masochist masochism that we're <laughs> about to embark on. Emma, do you want to spend a night in a hotel and then go camping? We might have a flat tire. So the tires look okay? Yeah. Let's hope. It's September 28th and we're super excited to be heading on a five day backcountry camping trip in Tomogamy. It's our first time in Tomogamy. We've been dying to go for a long time. So we're super pumped. We've got Emma in the back. She's super excited. We've been driving down dirt roads for a while and it's been good, but now we've come to a place where the road uh, forks a couple of times and is extremely narrow and extremely rough. Our car is not really meant for this stuff. Uh, so James just went walking down the road to check it out, see if we think we can get through. Uh, if not, we'll have to portage to our access lake, which is like Tomogamy. It's about five degrees right now. It's about eight, 40 I think about 8 45 tonight we'll be going down to minus one on the way here our uh, car gave us a low tire pressure signal which sometimes happens when you have a flat tire or a flat tire is developing so we're hoping that we don't come back to a flat tire anyway let's see if James thinks we can drive down this road we have to portage we have to portage we can't make it no No. Can go camping? We're leaving the car behind and we're yeah. portaging to the access lake. There's no way we could have gotten our car through this. Tomogamy. I think we're masochists. Yeah. I don't even think we understand the level of masochist masochism that we're <laughs> about to embark on. <laughs> that looks like an opening. And there's some ribbon there. Really nice people on the portage and they warned us that there are some white caps on this lake so we're just behind uh, behind some wind and we're about to go out into the wind and into the waves
that's what we need to do. You just have to stay calm, just anticipate the waves, and just kind of, you know. <laughs> and that's what makes her want to get up and move, which is like the worst. Here, we're gonna hang a right and then we'll see like a point some islands and a point and we just stay to the left of the point okay the water here is really clear it's like headwater lake but it's so big like it's insane it's such a big lake it's so clear Sun. Oh, that's nice. Look at the blue skies. Blue skies. That's it, I think. That's the end of the clouds. Oh, this is nice. Oh, we lucked out if this is it. I'm instantly warm. Yeah. Which is great at this temperature. It's like five, six degrees. Some buoys. Buoys, buoys, buoy, buoy. Boy. Oh, look at that! Is that a bald eagle? Oh, bald eagle! What? Pulled over to have a snack. And look at all these rocks. Look at the pattern on them. They all have these lines. All of them. It's cool. Pepperoni and baby bells and pretzels. Thumbnail slobber. Emma went for a swim. This is the reason I'm wearing rain pants and a raincoat, basically protect myself from her.
I'm gonna wait. You just wait there. It's so rocky over there. Sharp Rock Portage? Are you serious? That's what it's called? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yes. It is a Sharp Rock Portage. <laughs> like, legit. Sharp rocks. Everywhere. So you want to paddle through the wind and then go to the other end of it? Yeah. I think the best option is going to be over there a little bit. Okay. Found a perfect site. And these got blown over this year. Yeah, so we don't know if we can actually get to the campsite from where we got out because of the uh, yeah. down trees. This was a perfect little path here. Yeah, it was, eh? Bummer. Okay, well, let's see. Ooh, this doesn't look great this way. Carrying all of our stuff. Wow, this 
This got hit really hard. I wonder if it was a tornado. Oh wow. There's a lot Ooh. down. Yeah. Over there too. You see? No. So it came. Oh through. yeah. Up on that hill there. Wow. Look at up there too. This one. These guys. Wow. Definitely something major. Huh? Either tornado or like a microburst. Downburst. Yeah, look at these all these trees. That one snapped up high. Yeah, can we even stay here? Like yeah. where? I mean, nothing. There's no danger. But is there a spot to? Yeah, right here. Where? Oh, that tent spot there. Where someone decided to leave a tarp. Yeah. Man, can you imagine being here when this happened? Well, hopefully, no one was here when that happened. windy still so we're rigging up the tarp to create a bit of a wind barrier um, from the north side where the wind is coming from so that we have maybe a little bit of shelter um, by the fire pit from it just in case it uh, doesn't go away anytime soon okay We're gonna use this weird um, ripped up tarp that someone left here um, because I think there was a better tent pad down there before the trees fell on it. This one is not great. It has got a lot of pointy rocks and roots and things like that.
Good night, Emma. Got a branch stuck to her. There's frost all over your bag here. Oh, it's all frosty. Frosty. You frosty. What's this? Mm. Brookie? Hmm. Can you do a TikTok version? Emma, do you want some eggs? Some bacon? Good. Mm -hmm. A lot of bacon. Emma, that's mine. You just ate your breakfast. Mm. So we're on what was once probably the most picturesque site in Tomogamy on Diamond Lake. Unfortunately, there must have been a major storm, maybe a downburst or even a tornado, a small tornado, which took out so many huge pines on the campsite. You can see an example here. And it's just, it's like this everywhere. The whole site. They're either uprooted or completely broken. So it makes it really difficult to get around. See that one up there. And you can see even more up there. It's everywhere. And it's unfortunate because it was probably at one time such a nice sight. We still managed to stay here because we were exhausted from paddling in the wind up day. Yeah, you can see another one broken in the middle. Usually when you see them broken high up like that, it must have been a pretty violent storm. Let's 
Emma supervising your fishing effort? Yeah. She's ready to bite the fish. <laughs> The water level is really low here. It's been low everywhere. Um, we're gonna try and get through and see. Okay, we've made it. We made it this far, and the portage is right there. Portage sign. So we're gonna try and get out and make our way over there. I can get back a bit more. Back? Yeah. There's like a grassy kind of thing here. I think this is gonna give me some good footing. You know what's crazy? This is all lily pads, meaning this was all full of water not too long ago. Yeah, it's very low. <sighs> okay. Is it pretty firm? <laughs> no. It's no? Like sand. Oh no. James is going to try and get some logs for us, make a little bridge. Oh my gosh, I can feel that when you jump. The whole thing is like moving. Look at this tree. Huge vine. for some water and snacks, cliff blocks. Nice. You did it better. <laughs> Nothing like a 2.2k portage to make you realize you brought too much food and alcohol. We're feasting tonight. I feel the cold air from the lake. Oh, you feel cold air from the lake? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. How was that? 
That was the most rugged portage we've ever done, by far. Yeah. But it was good. Yeah. We made it. A lot of climbing and technical. How'd you do? You want a snack? Want some lunch? Lunch is served. Nice. <laughs> Not for you. You have to wait. You have to wait until we give you some. <laughs> You're seeing a face and an owl? Yeah, You're tripping? It's natural. natural? Natural totem pole? With an owl and a face? I totally saw the face. Oh, like while we were going by the other way. does look totally like a nose and a mouth right there. It's like tundra up there. Oh. It's like all bare rock. I mean, it'd be great for sun tanning. It's all wide open and exposed, like a mountain peak kind of thing. Oh. But it's, yeah, it's very dry. A lot of these jack pines. Yeah. And you got this, it's a pretty nice lookout. You could sit right here, it's flat. Right here you could sit. We're gonna check out this island site really good. I'm confused by the site because it looks like it's literally just this rock point and there's no privy or tent area. I mean there's not always a tent area, you know. But like this is it. This, you can't really get back. It's really bushy. got out on this site and it was so weird there's literally nothing to it there's no privy there's nowhere to put a tent but it's marked as a site and there's it's very bushy like there's no way to get back further into the site so anyway it's too bushy and small yeah we're definitely not standing yeah. we're going closer to the falls Lady Evelyn Lake. I've been here. Been here for a while. A couple hours. But we're getting closer and closer to where we're headed tomorrow, where we're gonna be starting tomorrow, so it's better. Okay, we found home. We're done. Well, this site looks amazing. Okay, we've located a washroom sign. Looks like it's going to be a bit of a hike to the uh, washroom. Oh, pretty. Just 
fine. Look at the view of this, hey? <gasps> Gorgeous. I'm kind of bummed we're not going to be spending more time here. Mm. Oh, I need a buddy to go to the bathroom. Oh, wow. Functional? Functional, okay. Oh, you need your mushroom. Weird. Is it one side or two? It's one. Oh. I mean, I guess you could share it. <laughs> So it's the perfect site, except it's ridden with black flies, <laughs> which is really weird because it's like the last day of September. And we're just trying to figure out because it's very large. Like there's this area that faces uh, sunset and then there's the area all the way down there uh, closer to the privy that faces sunrise. And the site marker is on this side where sunset is. So we've come in this way um, and it's great. There's a fire pit, firewood, all that good stuff. But there's also a fire pit down on the other end. This is home with all these black flies. Um, <laughs> we'll see if they start biting. I will see. Uh, I don't remember if they were down on the other end when we went to go look. So James is going to see if they're down over there. Or if they're just on this end of the site. But so far, it's like a whole other ecosystem over there. On the other end of this site. <laughs> this is the tent pad on this side. And it's all pretty slanty. And then that rock is pretty uneven um so the other side has a better tent pad and it is also less windy because we've got wind coming from over there so we think we're going to set up on the other side so the wine leaked in our food bag <laughs> i didn't double bag it or i didn't bag it at all um i had it in the cardboard whatever box it's boxed wine and the top was like faulty anyway i'll show you later but there's wine in our food bag i trusted that container and i shouldn't have and so i'm rinsing everything off and i also think that maybe the pickles that i put in a ziploc bag leaked into one of our scent proof bags we put everything in these scent proof ziplocs like big guys all the smaller um, packages of, of food and I think one of them has pickle juice all up inside so not a lot of daylight left for cooking and setting things up but uh, I'll be doing some rinsing of wine and pickle juice instead of cooking right now it sure is nice out Oh my god. Sausage rescue! Sausage rescue!
Hi. You've already eaten your dinner. Yummy? Mm -hmm. This is the wine box that crapped out on us. It's this here, this whole thing. Like, this is supposed to screw off, but this whole portion came off. Whoops. Won't be bringing this again. Normally use a platypus, so I'll continue to do that. Anyway, I'm going to pour the rest of the wine in here. We had some last night with steak. I'm going to pour it in here and start warming it up for mulled wine. heated up the wine in here and I'm gonna put in some maple syrup I'm not gonna put all of this in I actually brought enough to make two batches of mulled wine and we're only gonna do one so I'll do like half -ish. maple syrup and then this is about two ounces of Campari, which is an orange bitter liqueur. I'm not gonna save any of the booze, I'm just gonna use it all, even though it was meant for two batches. So, it'll be a little strong. And we have about two and a half ounces of bourbon in here. And then in here I have mulling spices. So a pinch of nutmeg, some cardamom cloves. Um, what is this again? Star anise and oh, cardamom pods and cloves. Those are two different things. So I'm gonna throw those in. And then I'll move everything closer to the fire for Probably just half an hour, because I don't think we want to wait much longer to start drinking this. There's quite a bit in there. And you don't want to heat it too hot so that the alcohol evaporates, but you want to warm it up so everything gets all mulled together. And I forgot the cinnamon sticks, so I'm going to put three sticks of cinnamon in. That's nice. That's toasty. Emma snuggling her sloth on her thermo rest by the fire. It's a miracle she's on this thing. We just put the fire out with water. We're securing our cook kit in our earth sack. Food has been hung. Emma's wearing her sweater. And now we're gonna make our way over to the other side of the campsite. Let's do it. Let's do it. We ended up hanging out on the sunset side, which is the west side of the, of the site, even though we thought we were gonna make camp on the east side, the sunrise side. We put our tent there but then the fire pit was much better for keeping warm because it was lower on uh, the west side. 
So now we're heading over to our tent on the east side of the site. So we'll be there in about half an hour. <laughs> Just kidding, but it's pretty far. How's the coffee? It's the only thing that's warm right now. <laughs> We're waiting for the sun. Thought it might have been coming up here, but I think it's coming up here. We ended up hanging out at the other fire pit last night because this one is uh, it's hard to get close to it. The other one's better for warmth. And we're not having a fire today. We're just gonna eat some cliff bars and have some coffee. It's really not a great time of year for this site and a sunrise. <laughs> We're getting sun in the morning to keep you warm. It's really following this uh, crazy ridge line, <laughs> hiding behind this mountain. Slippery here. Do you want to reposition it somewhere? No. Careful. Kind of a reach, right? Might be better. Actually, I can't get it up there. I can, re I can maneuver it. Oh, it's slippery. That site was great, but it was really big. And the way we set it up, we were kind of going back and forth a few times. But really pretty. And we thought we would get sun in the morning on that other side, but we really didn't. <laughs> but it was nice. Nice sight. Straight ahead is Frank's Falls. So pretty.
Center Falls. Uh, I don't think these are the falls. No? No, the falls are at the top. Oh, okay. The water levels are so low that this whole area is not flowing. <laughs> Just too bad. That's still really pretty. You can see all the rock. Wow. <sighs> nice. You did it. You did it. I hope that's the last one. I don't know. That looked really hard with a canoe. Yeah. I'm not totally sure which way to go. I think this way. Yeah? Wow. Oh, they're big. So big in person. Wow. It's like paradise. Yeah. Let's go look at them.
is so steep. Wow, nice one. Wow. Woo. Ah, it's gonna be a slow moving day. I think she burned some energy on that poor dog. For sure, I think we all burned some energy on that last one. That was by far the most challenging portage we've ever done. Yeah, for sure. It wasn't the most like, it, you know, it wasn't the most enduring one. No, that's not the right word. Yeah, endurance, it didn't require it that much yeah. endurance. It wasn't like an endurance type portage that, you know, you just need a lot of stamina to get through it. It was more technical climbing with a canoe on your back, whatever. I can't believe you did all that with the canoe. Look at this rock. Oh. It looks like a monster. A monster? Monster rock. What about this monster? James went on foot without the uh, canoe just to figure out where this portage ends. It's not super clear unless, I mean, it's possible that a tree fell on the path and a bunch of brush grew in <laughs> because there seems to be a bit more of a path down there, but we think we may have to walk along the rocks. Okay, so it's difficult. Yeah. So you can go along the shore on the rocks or through this portage, which looks like not many people do. Uh, I feel more comfortable doing it this way. There's less chance of moving rocks because there's soil in between them. Although at the end, James says that we have to go across the rocks on the shore anyway. Okay, and now we come out onto the shore side rocks. I've got to go all the way down there along the rocks. Okay, James, I made it quite a bit, but 
<laughs> this is really faster. So he came back to take my pack. So I just have the day pack now. Got me. You found a new navigator. Is she better? She doesn't know how to paddle. Ah. She only knows the doggy paddle. That's my strength. Navigation, maybe she'd be better. Yeah, so we feel like maybe we didn't do that one properly, but we couldn't find another path. So that was really difficult. That was really hard. Don't come here. <laughs> Seriously. I'm just saying, be prepared. It's very, very challenging. And somewhat dangerous. <laughs> so. I rolled my ankle twice on that one. You did? Oh, I stepped on one of those rocks. I was trying to check each one, but I did end up stepping on one that shifted like a lot. And I'm really lucky I didn't eat it and break something. I think Emma's okay. She's pretty agile. She seems fine. We'll have to keep, wa keep watch on her, but she seemed to handle herself well on the rocks. She's like a mountain goat. Okay, there's still rocks everywhere, so I have to look out. <laughs> 